Report number 600, Unnatural Speed. We have now observed on 37 occasions at time of this report the unnatural speed of the blank body. The species is capable of bursts of speed and grace appearing before one of us, moving to the rear and biting from behind in what is estimated to be fewer than two seconds. Additionally, some rare blank bodies have shown that they can continue acting at this fast rate, appearing down the other end of a street in 10 seconds, when it should take 60. There is no known remedy or defense against this quickness, which acts as one of the greatest threats to our termination of the species. It is supposed that they require blood in their system to act in this way, but we do not know how much or how long said blood fuels their actions. Current protocol is to record blank bodies of this type from a distance. If cornered by one, permission is granted to detonate a microbomb on the agent's person, as even the fast types do not show resistance to areas of fire or shrapnel. Slowing or destroying one of these creatures is worth a single agent's life. Greetings, kindred. I am Voivode Maquette. This is my companion, Dulahan. And today we are going to continue discussing the different disciplines in the world of Vampire the Masquerade, 5th edition. Today we cover celerity. Whether you call it balting, slipping, or velocitas, celerity is the preternatural speed granted to kindred by the blood of Cain. It's also one of the largest pains in the ass when it comes to storytelling when you're trying to work on a combat situation. There are various ways you can handle situations involving celerity, basically just for travel, stating that, oh, this person is going to get there first due to the fact that they have celerity. But I find that most systems of celerity are not very story functional. They're not very, they're not very story friendly. And on that, I was very pleased to see the differences that have come from Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition with this discipline, because it is the most comprehensive version that I've been able to find. We will get to the rules in just a second. What the book has to say about it is the ability to strike fast, dodge blows, and escape pursuers allows Kindred to become extremely effective predators. Celerity enables vampires to move faster than any natural creature, though it does more than grant supernatural speed, with vampires employing it actually appearing to think almost as fast as they act. While some vampires use to slice and stab at enemies without fear of repose, others simply use it to get from point A to B faster than any other person on foot. I have to say that I, I do like the wording there. Getting from point A to point B faster than any other on foot. A car is still going to outrun most kindreds with celerity. In my opinion, I would actually say that this would be a uh, test um, of, I would say, intelligence plus streetwise involving celerity. Uh, to be able to find back roads and things like that to get from point A to point B faster than anybody on a vehicle. Or individuals who are in flight using, uh, using Protean, Shape of the Beast, or something like that. Celerity itself is one of the three standard combat disciplines when it comes to LARP, but I do like the fact that this tends to take it a little bit further, where it's not just how many actions you can get to see how many times you can strike in a round. The organized character who understands how to spend XP in a uh, dickish manner, we'll call it that, is going to prioritize these things, these game-breaking disciplines. For if a character such as someone who's a Bruja has potence and celerity and is able to stack the extra damage along with the extra rounds for the older systems, they're nearly unstoppable. Even individuals with fortitude don't seem to be able to stack up to such a thing, which is why I personally get confused when you see all these venture princes who are successfully fighting off Bruja Anarchs. 
when you look at the logistics of it, I don't think that that is actually going to happen the majority of the time. However, with this new system, things have changed a bit. Characteristics, type, physical, masquerade threat, medium high. Celerity powers are clearly inhuman. The only saving grace being that they're very hard to catch on a film or photograph. That is also uh, a nice clarification. Um, we used to have these, uh, there's a sweet spot area where in the old versions of Celerity, if you used basics, you were considered safe. Specifically because it could just be that you have a heightened reflex or a better sense of things around you. Where you, it, It's impressive, but it's not exactly masquerade breaching. Uh, the middle ground intermediates or uh, levels three and four do tend to be a little bit more on the superhuman level where that's not possible, but a five. A five, if used in the right situations, is faster than the human eye can see. The fact that they have a more solid system on how celerity is supposed to work without being too much of a stickler for the rules, but also giving it more things to do than just you're a little bit faster now is a little bit of a relief. Blood resonance, caloric. Fear and utter terror. Runners, athletes, amphetamine and alkaloid users. Habitual players of first person shooters and Twitch games. That's hilarious to me. I love the fact that they're calling that out. But that kind of stuff does cause a person to have a heightened sense of um, adrenaline and is going to make people be more of a production value when it comes to celerity than anything else. Now, getting into the levels of celerity, I gotta say that I am I love the stacking. Because again, it's not all just speed. This more comprehensive, this more understandable version of celerity covers more of the predatorial grace of the vampire, akinning them to cats and the hunting styles of game predators and things like that so i'm glad that it's just not oh you gain another action or you gain you know you just continue gaining ac actions as you go i like the fact that there's more specified situations uh first being level one cat's grace the vampire gains a balance and grace equal to and surpassing world-class trapeze artists. They can walk and even run across ledges and wires effortlessly and keep their balance on the slimmest of supports. Cost, free. System, the user automatically passes any dexterity or athletics-based role needed to keep their balance. Note that this power does not allow them to balance on supports that cannot take their weight. Duration, passive. This is just a, a heightened sense of balance that is natural to that vampire at that point. The fact that they don't have to pay for it shows that it's not a concentration-based discipline. If they fall and catch themselves, they catch themselves. It's not, let's see if you're going to slip or anything like that. And I do like that. When I read Cat's Grace, the first thing that comes into my mind is the idea of the city gangrel. The Sabat gangrel, um, who are more prone to live in urban settings. Whose disciplines were Celerity, Offuscate, and Protean. And with the way Protean works now, with that optional uh, weight of the feather mixed with Cat's Grace, I see them walking, just stalking prey while walking on power lines, completely unable to be seen by the naked eye due to obfuscate. Um, the idea of these combinations of disciplines, not amalgams, but using them in certain ways is just, it, it gets the brain juices boiling, I guess. I've, I've come to like that phrase. but. That's where my mind goes when I think about Cat's Grace, is the things that you could accomplish in an urban setting in combination with other things. Perhaps it's just because I'm used to playing in a city setting and, and being playing a vampire, that makes a lot of sense. 
but the idea of just being able to balance on those power lines while you're stalking your prey is just so interesting to me. I don't even know why. I don't even know why I get such a, a, a cheap thrill out of that one because it's so, it's so vampire. It just screams vampire to me. Anyway, moving on. Rapid reflexes. While their bodies still can't defy the laws of nature, vampires with this power perceive events instantly and can react to them with superhuman alacrity. They can observe incoming projectiles to the extent that they can attempt to dodge arrows and even bullets without available cover. Cost free. System. With this power, vampires suffer no penalty to their defense pools for lack of cover against firearm attacks. They can also take a minor action worth up to two dice per turn, such as readying or reloading a weapon for free. Duration, passive. Another passive discipline. And I, I like I like the fact that the the first levels tend to be more passive and you're not having to worry about things because these seems like innate gifts within the system but the idea that you are so fast that you can dodge bullets dodge arrows and this does harken back to the old first basic discipline in the mind's eye theater system which is alacrity uh the ability to preempt an attack and not not to take things on a physical action but to be able to step out of the way i always use that for hunting and things like that. When I knew someone was going to turn, I would just instantly get behind them uh, and feed from them. <clears throat> Level two, fleetness. The mastery of celerity now allows the vampire to move and react with dizzying speed. The cost is one rouse check. The system, add the celerity rating to user's dice pool for non-combat dexterity test. Once per turn, the user may also do this when defending with dexterity plus athletics. Duration, one scene. The The fact that this is non-combat is a very interesting thing. This does not say that you can't use it in combat, but it does say that it doesn't help when you're actually in a combat situation. This, I think, is actually going to cause more people who have characters with celerity to be more thoughtful in their actions. And... Um, to know exactly how you should react to certain situations instead of just pulling out a weapon and start slashing. This is probably my favorite of the new celerity, which is Blink. The vampire swiftly closes in on a foe, engaging or escaping in the blink of an eye. To an unprepared observer, the user almost appears to teleport, a rush of wind the only sign of their passing. Cost, one rouse check. Dice pool. Dexterity plus athletics, or as needed. System. The vampire moves in a straight line towards a target, covering any distance under 50 meters while still having enough time to perform an action, such as an attack during the turn. If the terrain is in any way hazardous, the character needs to make a dexterity plus athletics roll to avoid stumbling and coming to a halt on the way. The storyteller may call for other contests as desired, especially if a vampire races a distant foe to an object or an action. Vampires engaging a foe with this power act as if already engaged when the turn begins. I like the fact that um, Blink has an example scenario to help you pinpoint exactly how this works. So, Siohi. I'm assuming this is how this is pronounced, has Blink. Facing an FBI agent 40 meters across hazardous terrain with his Glock 17 out, she wants to get inside the suitor's arc before he can fire. She rolls Dexterity plus Athletics versus the G-Man's Dexterity plus Firearms. On a win, she can make a brawl or melee attack before the Fed can fire. If the agent wins, he gets a shot off at the vampire first, and then she can make the brawl or melee attack. Duration, one turn. That is 
a very good explanation. Um, the idea that it doesn't say that she can't make the attack that she's planning on making. But if she wins, if she straight out wins, she blinks, moving from point A to point B without anything stopping her, where she'd be able to disarm the agent. Or if she loses, he, she's going to move, but also get shot in the process. But with the details of this discipline, saying that it's from point A to point B, it's a straight line situation, you're not supposed to be able to turn. It makes sense for vampires who are coming to grasp their power. Um, being able to get there without having the ability to actually turn. I think this example that they give is fairly well worded showing that Siohi has the ability to get there and possibly disarm the agent or if failing the test still going to get there but possibly get shot it shows that the point a to point b traversing of distance is a one shot kind of situation that you can't zig you can't zag you just got to go and there's a lack of control in that situation. Um, stopping is a thing that you can do, but it's more of your mind is set on that location and you get there. There's a scene in L.A. by Night, hosted by Jason Carl, um, when Nellie G, the Toreador of the Coterie, is facing off against her sire, Chaz, and they're both using Blink. And the descriptions that they use on how they're just there one second and on the other side of the room the next during this combat is so amazingly done that it's it really is a uh, a texture power it's 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 a power that has the ability to give feel to a story not just not just handle a situation now the next level three is traversal with blurring speed, the vampire can run or climb along any surface, including vertical or even liquid mediums. While traversal does not grant insect-like supernatural traction, running up or along walls presents little problem. Walking on water remains impossible, but the vampire can run on the water for a limited distance given a run-up. Cost, one rouse check. Dice pool, dexterity plus athletics. System, make a dexterity plus athletics roll with a difficulty of three for inclined surfaces with traction. To six, slick vertical surfaces or open water. Depending on the surface and angle, each point of margin gets the vampire further up or out. A margin of zero gets to a close target, a margin of one to one further than that, and so forth. The storyteller should inform the player beforehand if the target is too distant to even attempt. Traversal, as a rule of thumb, anything over water farther than 60 meters or more than 30 stories up a building probably exceeds this power's range duration one turn i'm liking the i understand a lot of disciplines have like a duration one turn thing but i like this very much for celerity because it does pull up that you are activating the adrenaline held within you for that moment and uh it's a lot better in my opinion for this uh than um being able to just like Oh, I'm going to do this for the scene, and therefore I have an hour to just zip all over the damn place. And again, celerity is such a pain in the ass for storytellers that the fact that it's powerful, it's terrifying, but it's limited, um, does breathe a little bit more air into my lungs on that one. Traversal reminds me of one of the gifts of celerity that they had in V20, which... I have stated in previous videos that I wasn't really the biggest fan of V20. I think it's a good system. I do. There was just a few things about it that I did not like. And as a storyteller who was running with the V20 system, I made modifications to fit my taste after a discussion with the characters and the players to see if I was just being stuck up. Um, but 
they have a celerity gift in that power where you can go vertically up walls. And that was always something that I felt celerity was missing. Um, I like the idea of I'm going so fast that I'm on the roof now. And they give that to you in a gift that you could very well, if you play your cards right, start a game with that. So, fun. Level 4. Draught of Elegance. The blood of the vampire becomes saturated with the power of celerity, conveying a part of that power to anyone who drinks of it. While this is also the first step towards the blood bond, already bound thralls or servants having little use for such worries, and even non-bound allies might decide to brave a sip for the sake of temporary power. Cost, one rouse check. System, drinking a rouse check worth of blood directly from the user gives the drinker with temporary celerity equal to half the celerity dots rounded down of the donor. The drinker gains the same non-amalgam powers as the donors up to that level. Duration, one night. For vampires, until the next feeding, or the vampire reaches a hunger of five. I like the fact that there are slightly different effects towards humans and vampires on this one. If a vampire, it's the next time they eat, it just saturates. If, if you give, if you have a lot of celerity and you give the draught of elegance to a coterie member, the next time they drink, they douse out the blood they've consumed from you. I think that's a neat thought. Now, if it's a human, they continue going for the night. And that's actually, it, it plays on a plotline idea that I have uh, that I would like to eventually do at some point. Although with the way my games go on forever, um, I don't know if that's even going to happen. But uh, the idea of a game that is fully centered around ghouls, they are still treated as vampires. They act as vampires but they have not been fully initiated into being vampires yet. So the idea of being a ghoul makes you basically a level one vampire where um, you're waiting to be brought in completely into society. But I'm speaking beyond, uh, I'm speaking beyond the purpose of this video. Um, when it comes to draughts, specifically like the draught of ele elegance and stuff like that, I do believe there is a fortitude power that originally worked like this in an older system where you could either let, I, I don't remember if it was you let them drink your blood and they get your fortitude or if you like put a dot on their forehead and they get their fortitude like a, like a blessing or something. But I do know that there was a system at some point, I, I don't know if it was second edition revised or not, where something like this existed for elders. Um, but I always allowed my players the option once they hit advanced to and this is again this is a homebrew kind of situation in my old games i used to allow my players to buy a second advanced because in larp systems there is basic intermediate and advanced which was a two two one thing um most of the time if a person said oh i'm going to buy my second advanced they would end up putting it into our own specialized draught style disciplines where they could give their power to someone else um, in the same fashion as draught of elegance works. So I can't say that I'm against that because I've been doing this for years and I'm glad to see that there's a, uh, there's a way that it's carrying over into things like celerity. Ah, our first amalgam. Level four, unerring aim. Amalgam Aspects 2. The world around them slowing to a crawl, the vampire can aim and throw or fire any weapon at a target as if the target were stationary. Cost, one rouse check. System, used before making a ranged attack. The target makes no roll to dodge or defend, making the attack a difficulty of one. An opponent possessing celerity five can nullify this power by making their own rouse check, defending at the same speed. Duration, a single attack. There's no doubt in my mind that this power was inspired by the movie Wanted, um, where 
everything slows down, like curve the bullet kind of crap. And I don't see them curving the bullet here, which is good, but the idea of you can make everything slow down. You're actually speeding up, but things just seem stationary to you for that attack. You're harnessing your adrenaline. And this is a outright combat level of celerity where it's disgusting and amazing at the same time. And where it's very interesting to me is the fact that it's Auspex 2. It makes complete sense that it's Auspex 2, but it also kind of implies that this is a Toreador power because Toreador get Auspex, Celerity, and Presence, where this really does seem like it would come in handy for an Asimite. But I, bu I completely agree with the idea of the mental acuity of Auspex being used with Celerity to accomplish this. Ooh, we are down to level fives. Level five, Lightning Strike. Faster than the eye can follow, the vampire can strike with fists or melee weapon at such speeds that the opponent is unable to defend or take evasive actions. Cost, one rouse check. System, use before making a brawl or melee attack. The opponent makes no roll to dodge or defend, making the attack at a difficulty of one. An opponent possessing celerity of five can nullify this power by making their rouse check, defending at the same speed. Duration, a single attack. I think the thing that catches my attention most with Lightning Strike is that it is unerring aim, but on a more physical level. Where unerring aim is I'm going to throw or shoot something, Lightning Strike is melee or brawl. And I don't care that they're separate disciplines. In fact, I like the fact that you have to consider a character who is good with gun might not be good at a punch. I don't mind that. What I think is interesting is the fact that one's a level 4 and one's a level 5. Um, again, I don't really care, but it is something that does catch my attention by looking at it. Level 5, split second. The speed at which the vampire moves catches up with their supercharged perception, allowing them to react to events around them at a moment's notice. Ambushers find their prey already standing behind them, and favors asked are completed before the words leave the supplicant's mouth. Cost, one rouse check. System, the player can supersede the storyteller's narration of events within reason. They can choose to have their characters move through the door before it closes, circumvent an ambush after it's been triggered, or roll out of the way of an explosion and so forth. The action taken must be reasonable and should not take more than a few seconds in real time. The storyteller decides what skills, if any, need to be checked to successfully accomplish an action begun using this power. Duration? Roughly one action as determined by the storyteller. Split second is one of those powers that could definitely save your life in a situation and where you would imagine that this is going to be some disgusting power where you're going to end up getting extra actions or something like that. It's more of a, the bomb is about to go off, I need to jump out that window. And I do like the fact that it carries on to the defensive properties of celerity more than anything. I'm not 100% sure if I agree with the whole favors asked are completed before the words leave the supplicant's mouth. That's, I mean, I guess if somebody said, hey, can I get a light? I already had one. But um, the, the power itself is written very well. And I, I got to say, again, I just, I like all of Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition celerity. That it makes the game interesting, but doesn't, tip it and celerity in my experience as an st has tipped the scales to unfair levels in vampire the masquerade fifth edition celerity is more focused on the elegance and the yes the speed but not necessarily the damage that you can do a weak character is still a weak character regardless of speed but being able to react and preempt 
and escape if need be is something very nice. A character who is, in essence, not a combat character is not going to become a powerhouse simply because they have celerity. But a character who is a powerhouse will become much more dangerous for it. And that is something that I love. And I would like to know, as always, what your opinions are with celerity and examples of what you have done to use it. I believe next week we'll be covering Dominate, which I'm looking forward to very much because, again, in V5, Dominate has become so much more than the simple I'm making you do this discipline that it has been in the past. The writers of these disciplines, the, the, the writers of these discipline rewrites did a damn good job, and I enjoy using these powers whenever I get the chance. Um, now, in Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, I have personally played a Ventru, a Gangrel, and a La Sombra. So I have not had the full field of all the different things that I get to play as a player character, though I am um, running the running a Chronicle and my NPCs or SPCs or whatever they're being called now um, do tend to be very versatile. So it's... Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to see where the powers have gone. And actually, the more I think about the way that these games are, I want them to come out with... Um, I, I don't mean to change the subject on this, but I do want them to come out with like a Thaumaturgy supplement. I know that was Monday's discussion, uh, but running a Dark Ages version of this game would just be amazing because of the way things work. Um, especially with the idea, and I'm actually, my mind is on celerity when it comes to this, that if you're playing an elder, the idea of you have this choice of disciplines, and if you're not playing an elder, you max out at five, but then as an elder, you can just go back and go, okay, I'm going to take this one, and make your character more, more terrifying when it comes to that. And I realized that very soon after I started playing my La Sombra, because Oblivion, La Sombra Oblivion, has such an interesting way about it where you need to think about what discipline do you want to work towards and what disciplines are going to help you get there. So, I am Voivode Maquette. This is my silent friend, Dulahan. And this is Our World of Darkness. Thank you very much for joining us. And please, let me know your thoughts on Celerity and your experience with the V5 systems of it. Also, if anyone wants to give any wonderful stories of things that have happened in the past involving this discipline, we'd love to hear from them too. Thank you for joining us. Good evening.